Hi there, everyone. Thanks so much for joining today for our webinar on effortless course creation with Sensei LMS. Uh, LMS, by the way, is Learning Management System for anyone not familiar with that acronym. Um, I'm going to just give maybe another minute here just to let anyone else join that's going to be attending today. Um, in the meantime, let me introduce myself. My name's Jerry, and I'm a happiness engineer uh, here at WordPress.com. Uh, so in my day to day, what I do is I help people who have questions with their websites. If they're new to WordPress.com and just getting started or or maybe they're having something funny happening with their site and they just want someone to take a look. Uh, that would be what I do all day, every day, uh, in addition to hosting these webinars, which I enjoy an awful lot. So thank you all for attending today. Uh, before we get started, uh, one thing I do want to mention, let me scroll these little fireworks out of the way here. Um, the way that this is going to go today is we're going to have a live presentation. I'm going to be introducing our guest speaker who's going to be uh, showing us how to work with Sensei today. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a live presentation. And then after the presentation is over, we're going to do live Q&A. Um, we're going to basically answer questions until we hit the top of the hour uh, or until we run out of questions, whichever comes first. So be sure to bring your questions. Um, you'll notice in the Zoom interface that there's a Q&A tab that's here at the very bottom of your screen. Um, you can kind of see me pointing it out here on, on my screen that I'm sharing with you. Um, so if you have a question about the um, webinar, about the uh, Sensei plugin, or just anything along those lines, please drop it into Q&A so that we can be sure to keep track of that. We don't lose it in the back scroll or anything like that. Um, and chat, you probably, I see a few of you are here, have found the chat button already. So chat's a really great way to just let me know where you're tuning in from. Las Vegas is awesome. I haven't been there in a couple of years, but I uh, always have a good time when I'm there. Uh, we got folks tuning in from India, uh, London, UK. Uh, our panelists today is joining from Austin, Texas, and, and also uh, Canton, Ohio. So that's a pretty good spread uh, of folks here for the day. Oh, South Africa, India too. Wow, <laughs> we've got a couple of people here who are up late. So really appreciate you turning in. Uh, North Wales, I love Wales. I spent a great, uh, a great time in Cardiff and in that area. And I will go back. I love Wales. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, Abu Dhabi, wow, we're very well represented here today. Um, great to see you all. Um, we're going to go ahead and get things started here pretty quick. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're going to... Uh, Oops, there we go. As I mentioned, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be um, doing a live presentation and then Q&A afterwards. So be sure to drop your questions in the Q&A. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is that on WordPress.com, you can use plugins and themes for WordPress sites. Uh, WordPress is a, a little bit like, um, uh, it's good to think of it like a smartphone. Like it does a lot of really great stuff right out of the box, but if it doesn't do everything you need, then there's plugins that are available to add functionality that WordPress doesn't come with out of the box. And that's what Sensei is. Sensei is a plugin for WordPress, and you can use it here on wordpress.com by upgrading to our business plan. And our business plan is, um, is our managed hosting where we take care of uh, security and backups and brute force login protections. And um, uh, we even provide in-house support with live chat options. So if you have a question about your WordPress site, uh, our happiness engineers are happy to help you. This is actually what I do all day, every day. So uh, there's a lot of advantages to hosting your site here with WordPress.com. Uh, one of those big advantages, of course, is that you can use a really great plugin like Sensei to create a uh, online course. Um, you can even sell your, your courses online and make money off of your education as well. Uh, I think that's enough introduction for today. So uh, without uh, any further ado, I'd like to introduce Ronnie Burt. Uh, Ronnie, go ahead and turn on your camera. Um, Ronnie is joining us from Austin, Texas, and he is the business lead for Sensei. Uh, he's going to be leading us today in our, our webinar. So again, if you have any questions, just drop them in the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to turn off my camera and I'll be lurking in the background there. So I'll be in chat and whatnot. Uh, Ronnie, it's all yours. Go ahead and take it away. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me now. I think you can, which is good. And I'll start sharing my screen as soon as um, Jerry, yours gets taken down, I think. Um, oh, I can stop it for you. So perfect. Well, thank you all very much for joining. Um, very excited to be able to share a little bit about 
sensei, course creation, making some money by selling courses, um, using WordPress.com, using the Gutenberg editor, a whole bunch of good stuff that I hope that we can spend the next, I'm going to try to keep it to about 40 minutes or so, so that we have a good amount of time for some Q&A. Um, so I, if you can all see my screen now, which is good, this is my Gravatar profile, which I just wanted to link you to, because if you are interested in following up or following personally a little bit, my links are there. So it's gravatar.com slash Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, and in a nice and easy way to link uh, to all of those good links. So a little bit about me, though, I started um, out of, well, first of all, while I was in university, I was doing word uh, website accessibility reviews for university websites. And that kind of was how I got my foot in the door with working on the web. So making uh, websites more accessible to people with disabilities, maybe visual impairments, um, hard of hearing, all sorts of different things. Um, and then I went on to be a math teacher, algebra, calculus for six years. And then I taught um, at the university level. I taught for three years um, critical thinking, logic, and some writing courses. And that was all done at the university level online, which was really my kind of first entry into this world of online education. And this has been about 10 years back or so. And then um, for the last decade plus, I've worked in the world of WordPress, um, building WordPress services and tools, plugins, mostly for education, for teachers to use in classrooms, for universities to use platforms. And for the last two years, I've been here at Automatic, which is the same company uh, behind WordPress.com, uh, working with the teams behind Sensei LMS plugin. And so that's really where our focus is today, but I thought it just important to kind of um, give you a little bit of perspective into who I am and why you might, um, you know, who, who are you listening to? And you can decide if you want to trust me or not and that sort of good stuff. But, um, you know, I, I, I have really, you know, 20 years basically of, of working um, where these sorts of web and education worlds intersect. And so, the first thing I'm going to show you is on WordPress.com. If you are on the homepage or any any page on the website, really, under products, there is a course maker link. And that course maker link will take you to this page here, which is the information about um, the Sensei LMS plugin that is available on WordPress.com. And there's some a lot of information that we'll cover here today, but it's just a good handy link. Um, create a course to you know, give you a little bit more insight. Uh, one of the things um, we were just talking about all of the things you can do with the WordPress.com, including adding plugins. One of the things that's never talked about that I just wanted to mention, because I think it's like a secret that we don't really tell people is this automated scaling thing going on um, where on the business plan, your, your sites will automatically, well, there's redundancy built in and multiple data centers. And if you get a lot of traffic, it's going to scale. And that's really important, actually, when we start talking about websites that are hosting courses, maybe membership sites, maybe um, e-commerce stores. And the reason is, is because you have a lot of logged in activity. Your users typically and those sorts of sites are going to be logged in. And whenever you have logged in traffic, those users have to, you know, give their username and password to get in. Um, caching and all of these tricks that in the web industry we use to help serve websites, make them super fast and scalable. A lot of that caching isn't really possible or not, not to the same extent um, whenever you're talking about an, uh, a learning management or a course site or a membership site or an e-commerce site with logged in because that data is being tracked or it's being um, you know, generated dynamically or all sorts of things. So it's important to have, um, especially as your as your course instance grows and you get even on, on a lot of hosts, even like 10 or 15 concurrent logged in users, lo users logged in at the same time can really start to drag a site down in performance. So anyway, that was a little off track, but I was just reminded about that and thought it was cool to share. So from this page, is a nice easy button to create a new course site and so i'm going to quickly show you what that process looks like 
Um, I am keeping an eye, all, by the way, on the Q&A, but I am not keeping a close eye on the chat. Um, we will probably save most questions till the end, but I was a teacher for a long time. I'm very used to being interrupted, and I'd rather answer your questions in real time, so I'll try to keep a close eye on that um, if, you, if you get it in quickly. Um, let's see if I can even pull up the chat. And so what we're going to do today is I'm going to demo showing you what the course creation process looks like and little tips and some tricks and some things like that. And to do that, one of the, the first thing whenever you're creating a course, right, is to know what the course is going to be about. And it is important that as the educator, or the course creator, that you do know a little bit of something about the topic that you're creating a course. So for the purpose of our demo, I'm a big tennis fan. I'm not a great tennis player, but I'm a big tennis fan. And so I thought we would just create a very simple intro course to the basics of tennis. So I'm going to give my course, my site, um, a name. And let's see, learn tennis. And here I can go ahead and see a little preview of what the site could look like. Um, and depending on your screen size, it'll it'll show you a little bit differently, but we can choose from different st styles and it's important that we can really update and change all these later. But since this is tennis, tennis balls green, courts are often green. I'm gonna go with this green. Um, kind of color palette for my for my course and I'm going to click continue. Now the system's going to this is if we're starting scratch with a brand new website um, It's going to suggest some domain names that we can choose and what's really cool is that there's some pretty cool domains that are still available uh, learn tennis training learn tennis school learn tennis university coach um, dot institute so all of these are available today. And with the business plan, you also get your first year registration fee uh, free for for any of these domains included in that in that fee. And then they renew, depending on the the extension. Dot blog is twenty two dollars a year. Dot school is twenty eight dollars a year. That sort of thing. Um, but we just make it nice and easy and discoverable. And there's a lot of really cool domain names available for the education space that it's worth looking at. Um, and a little bit later, I'll show you about, you know, getting started if you already have a website that looks a little bit different, and that's that's totally okay. Um, so all of the Zoom tools are covering up my tabs here. Um, the next step in the process, it, once you select one, and I'm just going to select the free, is that we'll choose the price and everything. And I'm not going to show you all of that because... Um, you don't need to see me enter credit card information, um, but what I will show you is once the site gets created, I've gone ahead and created a site, blank site. So this is what you would see after you you know go ahead and pay and, and get logged in. Um, and you'll see if you're familiar with WordPress, it is a WordPress site. We have everything on WordPress.com like you're used to, but we've pre-installed the Sensei Pro um, plugin for you. And so that's the Sensei menu item here on the left. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a new course. And I'll show you what that course creation looks like and what it looks like on the front end and, and all that sort of stuff. So we just we go to courses and then new course. So we get asked, what would we want our course title to be? Um, so intro to tennis for this title, what I'm thinking, it's nice and simple. And we can give it a course description, you know, the basics of the game of tennis. Um, you can go more in depth if you want. The reason you put the description is in is a little tip is we start creating um, landing pages for you. And if you do fill in this description, we'll, we'll go ahead and put that information in for you and kind of just simplifies the process. We'll hit continue. Now we can choose from that course landing page layout. Um, we have a couple of defaults that you can choose from, or you can start from scratch and build your own. So this landing page is the page that people see it's your sales page, your marketing page for that course. So you're going to want to give it all sorts of information about, you know, how to register, maybe how much it costs, 
um, and uh, and all that sort of stuff. And I'll show you in a in a minute about like hooking up with WooCommerce so we can make sure that we can take money for these courses and how that all works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the course default, just a basic layout here, just to keep things um, simple. But we we see our title, our description, and we have a button on how to register and to take. So if we wanted to ch change the colors and the background of the font, I'll go ahead and answer that question here, because I think that's, that's fine. Um, let me go ahead and... Well, I'll do that in a minute. I will also show you about the colors and the fonts after I go ahead and get the outline. So now we need to decide on the course outline. And this is something you probably want to go ahead and have worked out before you even get in to creating the course is the outline of the course. And so that's what are your lesson titles going to be? You can also choose to have what we call modules. Modules are like chapters or sections. They're a way of categorizing your lessons. So you know, if a course has seven or eight lessons, you may not need modules. If you have like 10 or 20 or 30 lessons, you may want to break them up into modules and our chapters. Um, this course is going to be kind of a short one. So I am going to just write down real quick the titles of the lessons that I came up with. And to be fair, I'm just, this is a demo course. I'm not going to be publishing this course. Um, but here, move that back up. Um, so this might not be like the exact, if I was really making a course, I might choose different lessons, but for the purpose of our demonstration, this is going to work. Um, do a little bit about trick shots, talk about what happens at deuce and then the last one is going to be all about playing doubles and then what i'm going to do is go ahead and make sure that i save i i think i moved a little fast so now they're all saved as drafts and i'm going to publish you don't have to publish the course here, but so that I can show you what the front end looks like a little bit better and, and also what it looks like to um, edit the colors and things, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and publish it. So I'm going to view the course and you'll see that this is now the front end. Um, I don't have any lessons published. They're all saved as draft, but my lessons are here in the outline. Someone could come and register. Um, so here's where I'm, I'll go ahead and um pause a little bit and show you about now that we have the front end i'll briefly show you about the fonts and the colors um i say briefly because i think there are already some webinars around the the full site editing capabilities and that could be like a whole discussion because it's a super powerful tool but what we've done is if you're choosing this here we have a free theme called the course theme that was preloaded with this site which is a really new theme that respects all of the latest and greatest in, in WordPress, including the full site editing. So I'm going to go to Appearance and Editor. And when I open the editor, this is where we can handle the global styles, the fonts, the colors, all that sort of thing. So styles are here. This is where we had like those um, defaults, but maybe I want to edit this one. And there's a little some tips that will help you walk through it. But let's say we wanted to change um, the background color. We can make it yellow here and it'll do it in real time. Um, I'm going to change it back just so we don't break other things. Beyond the colors, there's also typography, which includes um, your text, which you can choose from different fonts. We have a whole bunch available um, and all that sort of thing. So it's better to do these sorts of things in the site editor because then it'll get applied to every page, every post, every lesson. Um, now, if you have an existing site and an existing theme, um, you can just use the Sensei tools for your, your lessons. 
and courses. We call that learning mode, which I will I will show a little bit more, where you can also make sure that matches your existing site and your existing theme. Using the same sort of thing, you open up the lesson um, in the site editor here, and then you can edit the colors and the styles to make it match um, your branding or your existing site. So I'm going to exit back out of here, and I'm going to go in now that we had um our course published i'm going to show you creating a lesson so our course is published um and i'm going to start with history of the game so i've clicked on it there's a little nice link here to edit that lesson now we can, it preloads the title that we gave it, but if we didn't like the title, we could edit it here. And then we also have lesson patterns um, that kind of give you an idea of some of the things that are possible, checklist. I'm gonna show some of these timed quizzes, flashcards. I'm gonna show some of these in more detail in a little bit. I'm just gonna start with the default. Actually, I must have chose flashcards. Let me get that flashcard out of there. This is a big tip. Um, these three lines up here, uh, three horizontal lines, will save your life if you're ever stuck. Um, it, it opens up the sidebar here so where I can remove those flashcards because I didn't mean to actually add those flashcards. Um, so now we have the history of the game. So we're getting into creating our course. And I'm going to cheat a little bit here and show you something um, that is available on WordPress.com and any site that's using the Jetpack plugin, which is the AI tool. I wouldn't normally recommend, by the way, using ChatGPT or AI to completely just write your courses and your lesson content. I think that's going to be super text heavy. It's liable to have some mistakes and errors, which I can show you some examples of in a minute. But for the purpose of our demo to help me create content really fast, I'm going to show you this. So what I did was, uh, let me do that again. So I was talking. Um, I got into the lesson where it says type slash to choose a block, or you can click the plus sign that's over here on the right. And I'm going to search for AI, and I'm going to choose the AI assistant. Right now, it even reminds you that it's experimental, but I'm going to ask the AI to give me a bullet point list of the history of the game of tennis. And it's going to generate that real fast. Um, What's interesting is I've done this three or four times with the same prompt, and it's always slightly different each time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and accept these, but this is not what I wanted to show you. I do not want you to just accept these and publish these. I have a big philosophy, just the experience of teaching. Um, you know, people on the internet, we are so used to skimming, right? We've gotten really good at visiting any website, the social feeds uh, that we use, blog posts, and we've become trained to kind of skim pages, read really quickly, not read every word, look for things that catch our interest, and maybe we'll stop and we'll pay more attention. So you have to remember that as you're creating courses, you know, everyone taking your courses the same way. They did sign up for the course. Um, I mean, unless you're doing something like uh, corporate training, you know, they probably signed up because they wanted to. So you have that going in your in your favor, but we have to do things to kind of make the course interesting, make the lessons, give them pause, make sure they have time to experience the content and play around. So that's really what I wanted to spend a lot of our time with is showing you some of those tricks that we have to do that. So the first is kind of the easiest. Instead of this bullet point list of this timeline of the history of the game, you will find a um, timeline block. So I hit the forward slash. I started searching for time for timeline. Now I have the timeline block. And so I can pick the ones of these that are interesting. And I might suggest shortening them. And I definitely would suggest, you know, fact checking and making sure that these are true. I also like if you think there's something really important, uh, you know, go ahead and make it bold so it stands out. 
And then now I'm going to choose, oh, in the 16th century, they started using brackets. That's pretty interesting. So I'm going to make an add entry here to make a second entry. So in the 16th century, I'll go ahead and make that bold. And then let's just do one more. Um, how about, this is actually, I've always found this fascinating, to be honest, because it, it seemed like there wouldn't be a lot of indoor stuff way back in the day, but the game of tennis was actually played indoors until 1870. Um, so add entry. Now I'll make that bold. Now we can do some interesting things to kind of uh, give you a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. I'm going to close the left and I'm going to bring up, um, actually let me bring it back up. I want to make sure I highlight the entire timeline. And then I'm going to close it. And I'm looking for my settings here. They're over here on the right. And I like I like it when my timeline is alternated. And then these backgrounds don't really stand out very well. So I'm going to hover over this one. And I'm going to give it a background color of yellow. And I'm going to click this one, give it a background color, maybe a pink. And this one, maybe a background color of light green. So now they kind of stand out better. And when we click publish, you can kind of ignore all this down here, but we're gonna view the lesson. Now, this is the first time, I'm gonna go ahead and register for the course so that it'll show you that it looks a little bit better. What the course layout is gonna look like, right? We have, this is what the course view is. We call this the learning mode or distraction-free view. So it doesn't show you all of the menu items at the top of your website. It doesn't show you like um, sidebars or whatever. It's really just the course. Your, your learners are immersed in the course, so they have fewer distractions. And then we have the course outline over here on the left and on the history of the game. Now, instead of a bullet point list, like what would you rather read in a course? bullet point list or a timeline that's gonna make you spend a little bit more time to go through each one. So I vote for the timeline. So I thought that was a fun example. I'm gonna show you a couple of more examples. If we go to, I'm gonna go back. And if you click on W, we can um, find our draft lessons. So the second lesson was the court. So I'm gonna bring up the court to edit. Again, I'm going to choose the default layout. This time I didn't accidentally choose the flashcard, so that's good. Now, I could just give you uh, an image of the court, or I could just give you words of the court. Something I'm going to show you is if we look up image, there's one called image hotspots. I've already uploaded this image of a, of a tennis court. I actually got it. Actually, I'll just show you. I got it from um, Pexels, so it was, it's a free image. It already gives me my caption with the rights for the, the Pexels um, attribution. Select that. Now I have an image here of a tennis court. And I'm not gonna fill this whole thing in for you, but I think you'll, you can pick this up pretty quickly. Up here, we have add hotspot. I can add a hotspot anywhere on the image. So this whole area right here is called the doubles alley. Um, it's important in this area that you're bringing up for these hotspots, you can put any kind of content. You can embed a video, you can add audio, you can put a quiz question, um, another image, all sorts of things. And so um, you can also, you know, maybe that green doesn't stand out very well. So I can make sure that I change over here in my sidebar this little half moon is always your, or the, the moon, the circle with the, the half circles is, I don't know what the technical name is. I should learn that, but it's, um, it brings up your, your colors so we can make it something that stands out a little bit more. Well, that's for the whole background. Um, this is when we have the marker color. We can 
can change all that sort of good stuff. And it kind of blinks to, to draw the attention for the user. I'll just do one more. This is the service line. And now I will publish this lesson. And you will see, notice that the complete lesson button works. It'll allow me to just complete the lesson without actually opening up each one of these hotspots. One thing that I really like is I'm going to go back into the editor mode is when we're here on the hotspot, much like on when you're creating contact forms, the little asterisk means required, it's the same. For many of our tools, you can mark them as re required. So if we require the image hotspots and I update, now I go view the lesson. Um, I think because I had already opened them, it's going to let me complete them. So we'll test this again with a future one, but it won't let you mark the lesson complete until the person opens all of the hotspots. So that's just another way that we can kind of force people to slow down, to not skim, um, to be a little bit more interactive, which is going to give them a much better chance of retaining that information that you're trying to share with them. All right, so the next lesson is Rocket Grips. And that should say racket grips. I clearly typed that in wrong. So let me fix that. Which I know some of you probably think there should be a Q, a letter Q in the word racket. Um, not for me, not today. I think I keep clicking the wrong one. Might check on that bug later. Um, let's remove that flashcard. Ironically, though, this lesson, I am going to show you the flashcard, so I'll go ahead and leave it. I'm going to use AI again um, just to show you how easy this is. Create a list of the common racket grips in tennis and tell when you use them. That's a pretty poorly worded sentence, but the good thing about AI is it usually does a pretty good job of understanding what I mean. So that's a whole lot of text. Um, what we can do is instead of presenting them in text like this, is we can do each one in a flashcard, Eastern forehand grip. Uh, let's accept this so it doesn't disappear. Each one of them, so Eastern forehand grip is the front of the flashcard. And then the definition is the back of the flashcard. Sorry, I'm moving really fast uh, just because for time, <laughs> um, but hopefully this gives you a good good overview. Um, and I'm going to mark this flashcard the same as required before I publish. And I'll just do one more. We'll do the Western forehand grip. So we'll need to insert after another flashcard block. So open up the blocks by hitting the forward slash. Western forehand grip. Used for topspin. And again, similarly, when you're editing like the back of the card, you can click the little styles icon and you know, we can do all kinds of fun things, dual tone. Um, we can put an overlay with a gradient. And then we can, did I mark this one as required and publish? So here we can see the flashcards in the in the lesson, it's gonna allow me to, it says you will have, you still have some items to complete and it tells you what you still have to complete. You need to flip those flashcards. So we gotta flip and flip. I must've done them backwards, but that's all right. Now it'll let me complete the lesson. Um, so let's 
I'm going to skip keeping score, just kind of looking at our time. And I'm going to go to trick shots. So this is a fun one. Um, one of the things that you know a lot of you probably are using or want to use with your courses are videos and video lessons. So I'm going to choose the video lesson one. And we always recommend that whenever you do a video, you paste in the text of the transcript. That's helpful for search. It's just helpful for people to read along or at least put, um, you know, use a service that will give you, um, let someone enable the um, captions or subtitles um, with the video. But now we need to add a video here. And so I'm going to, I've chosen a quick YouTube video. You can also, also on wordpress.com upload videos directly. You don't need to use YouTube. That'll help hide the, um, any ads or anything like that and keep it a little bit more professional looking. Um, but YouTube is just fine in some cases. And similarly on sites not hosted on wordpress.com, you can use Jetpack Video Press plugin for that. So I'm gonna insert this video by URL and it's embedded this, this video. But now I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to, I can mark it required, but there's also an icon up here that add breakpoints to the video. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna add a breakpoint, but you wanna watch the video and pause it on a place where you want that breakpoint to appear. And then I'll show you what that breakpoint looks like. So we're only gonna watch like 10 seconds of this. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear, but that's okay. Um, so here, Gonzalez hits an amazing shot. The ball goes back over the net. And the other player, I think it was Del Potro, did not have a chance to hit it. So my, I'm going to add a break point here to this video. Um, it needs to be at that time here, um, which was here, about five seconds in. We're going to edit the content. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a single quiz question. So we're going to look for the question block. And I'm going to say, you be the umpire. And who won the point is the question. And the question is, did the server win? Or did the person that was returning the serve win the returner? And the correct answer here is the server one because, um, and I'm, you can put answer feedback here, which is pretty neat. Um, the server one because the um, returner must touch the ball before it crosses over the net. Um, otherwise, they don't win the point. And sometimes it's okay to have the same feedback, both for correct, right, and wrong. Um, but let's go ahead and publish this lesson. Now we're going to view it. We have the video here. And you'll see there's a second time, there's a timeline underneath with that breakpoint shown. So when I hit play, we see that play again. And then the video is paused and our quiz question comes up and I'm gonna choose the returner and it's gonna tell me that's incorrect. I can try again. And then it'll tell me why I was correct. Um, and then you can continue on with the video and you can add multiple breakpoints, put one at the end. You can also use this on your sales pages, on your landing pages. You can have like a, um, a lead generation form, a contact form or collect email addresses in the middle of a video. Pause it, give images, text, whatever you want in these in these interactive videos, which is pretty cool. Then um, the next one I'm going to show you is doubles. Um, so I'm looking at Steve's second question there. What if your content is presented on video? You can have your whole course be video and that's totally fine. And we support that. 
There's another layout that I'll show you in a minute that looks more like a video course, maybe something like masterclass.com or something that you can use. Um, you can choose to use these interactive video breakpoints within the video or not, it doesn't matter. Um, so we definitely support that. So I'm going to um, do the next one being Deuce. And this is a world premiere. Um, because I'm going to show you the latest tool that we're working on. It's not launched yet, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it is based on AI, but what's different than most things that you're seeing around the web is it's not on content generation. It's letting the, the learner, the person taking your course, have a very quick conversation, a chat with the AI to see if they understand the content or not. So we're going to do it with um, how does Deuce work? And so this feature is not available yet, but it will be in July, um, hopefully earlier in July than later. Um, but it's been pretty fun to work on. So I'm going to demo it here. I am going to demo it by go ahead and asking the AI tool again to how does Deuce work in the game of tennis? Um, and I'm going to double check, make sure that looks pretty good. Yep, that's pretty good. So I'm going to copy that. And now we are going to have uh, an open ended question. So we call this, it's just search for AI and oh, sorry, it's tutor AI is the name of this block. And the question is, explain what happens when the score is 40 to 40. Um, and that's the score of a game is 40 to 40. And then I'm going to paste all of this as the long answer of what deuce means. Um, and I am going to say when both players have won three points each in a game, and I'm going to clarify, and the score is 40 to 40, just so we can kind of make sure that we get a good, good response. I'm going to go ahead and delete this information because it's no longer needed. And now we're going to publish this lesson. So this is hopefully really good in a situation where you want to have kind of open-ended but short answer questions in a quiz, and it will auto-grade basically the responses and give the um, learner real-time feedback based on their answers. So explain what happens when the score is 40 to 40, and I'm going to just say deuce. I'm just going to make it very short, not a full answer, and we'll see what the AI comes back with. Um, and it, it, it kind of elaborates a little bit more to win a game from this point, a player must win two consecutive points, one of which must be won by the opponent. Um, so it gives a lot more and then you return to deuce. Honestly, I tried this before. I think I had much better instructions when it was more of a step-by-step, -step, um, when it kind of walked me through, I just put deuce and it said, well, that's close. Um, the idea is that it's going to give you hints without telling you the full answer. This is one of the reasons why it's still in demo and we can we can play with some others, but sometimes it works really well. You do definitely want to test it. It also works well with like math questions or coding um, short like uh, examples and a technical thing, um, all sorts of, of things that we've been testing and playing with this is a kind of a quick tutor um, based on your answer. And you can also mark them as required so that someone can't complete the lesson until they get to the right answer according to the AI. So I'll be honest, I'm a little disappointed with this one. I'm gonna work on that prompt to make sure that it works a little bit better next time because in my practice, it worked much better, um, but it just gives you a taste of, of where we are going. And then the um, we also have an AI tool that will um, generate quiz questions for you. And I'm not going to demonstrate the whole thing, but just to show you 
can do a whole quiz. And um, there's a, a thing here, generate quiz questions with AI, where it reads the lesson up above and it suggests three multiple choice questions uh, for you. We definitely recommend you, you know, look through those, but it, it gives you a good starting point if quizzes are a big part of, of your lesson. Um, I also, we have, we can, I could have given the AI a little bit more context here and maybe it would have been a little bit better. So this is all still super early. Um, I do want to show some things that are not about the lesson generation. So I'm going to show you some of the course settings. See what happens. Um, so I'm going to go back into courses. Edit my course. And show you some of the big features that we have. First of all, pricing of a course. So if you have WooCommerce installed, and this will install it for me, all you do is create it as a product. Um, the course becomes a product, and we actually automatically create the product for you. Um, you give it a price, you put in your payment processor, and you can start charging for courses, and you can use all the Woo extensions. We could have a whole like hour long plus on that process, but we do have pretty good documentation on our website that we'll walk you through. And then our great um, support team, happiness engineers can, can answer questions as well. But this is where you go to set that price. And then we also have course settings where you can schedule courses. So maybe they don't become available to a specific date in the future. You can um, make lessons not available. So this is really good. I see this used a lot. Like if your course is hybrid and you also include like a Zoom uh, webinar or a video component or real time or something, you can add a lesson into your course for that. Schedule it to be live, um, you know, on that date and time and put the information like the Zoom link and everything in there. And then once that expires, you can make that lesson no longer available if you wanted to do something like that. Um, if you have video courses where everything's a video, we can, you have a setting here to where whenever someone finishes watching a video, it'll automatically mark that lesson as complete and then move them on to the next lesson. You can also set it to where, um, you know, videos must be watched. The one thing is on a lot of video players, tips and tricks around it, people can just scroll through real fast or whatever. You don't really know that they're watching it, but it, at least you can encourage them to watch the videos. Um, you can also set it to where if they go off screen, open up another tab or, or whatever, it'll auto pause the video. Um, you can have multiple teachers or instructors in a course. So we would just add a second user here, um, choose from the available users. If you had multiple courses, on your site, you can set course prerequisites. So they must take the intro to tennis course first before they take the like expert tennis strategy course or whatever it is. Open access is really unique um, that we can make a course available where you don't need logins. Um, so those are kind of the big ones that I wanted to show. I know I want to leave time for Q&A. Um, if you want to add these plugins, if you have an existing WordPress site, you're going to go to the plugins menu and add new. If you're on WordPress.com and search for Sensei, um, look for Sensei Pro if you're on WordPress.com. Look for the Sensei LMS if you're not hosted on WordPress.com. That's, the, that's a, the free version that you can install, and then it will walk you through how to upgrade. Most of the things that I showed you today, those interactive blocks, flashcards, the AI tools, and that kind of stuff is going to be um, in the pro version, but it's a good place to start with the free version as well. And then the last thing I'll show you is the showcase on senseilms.com. There's a link to the showcase at the top. If you liked this, but you wish there was a little bit more, um, this course here, Make Better Video Courses, is just a 15-minute short masterclass that I put together, all video-based. Um, and I can show you, this shows you what that video look is like, um, where the video is front and center. Um, and 
you know, your course outline moves to this side. This is something you can totally create on your own, but I uh, walk you through a little bit more philosophically um, some tips and things for creating better courses, especially video courses. And then um, I do want to highlight, make sure we link you to our AI guidelines since I showed off some AI stuff. It is still a little experimental. You might find that it messes up. I found it last week um, messing up some pretty basic math which is a little disappointing. So just be real, um, you know, it's pretty exciting times that we live in, um, but also like it's not meant to be a replacement for humans creating really good content or anything like that, but it can be a, a, a nice place for you to start, uh, get some ideas or, or things like that. So um, I see lots of good questions here. So let me... The help with monetizing, I would say um, from Mark that, you know, just using WooCommerce, then I've seen lots of people get really creative with, um, you know, bundling or discounts or including the course with access to a membership site or a book or a white paper or something like that, like giving out those sort of um Something more than the course, I guess, is a common strategy. Um, but there's there's a whole lot there. Um, how does that sound? Should I just go through and read yeah, the yeah, questions? Sorry, or? I just kind of snuck in here as you started. Yeah, it's good. Q and A. Uh, first, you. let me just let's break for a second and say thank you. That was a really great presentation. Uh, I personally was not expecting to see the AI tools in action, so I think that was really interesting to see how that kickstarts course creation and makes. A lot of the heavy lifting easier, um, although with the, with your warnings to edit it and check it for accuracy and everything like that afterwards. Um, I think what I wanted to say is um, I'm mostly just going to let you answer these questions because you're the expert here. Uh, but I do want to add in our chat that we do have a document on WordPress.com, more generally speaking, about how to monetize your site. So check out the chat. You can see there's a link I dropped in there. It doesn't cover Sensei specifically, so this covers... Um, just how you can monetize your WordPress.com site, generally speaking. Um, and then maybe you can sort of add on to that a little bit, like what, um, you know, what ways do you monetize Sensei most effectively? Nice. And I see there were there were multiple questions about modules. Let me see if I can combine them. Um, yeah, so we got a lot of about questions in here. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. Um, one of them is about the module pages, which is, yeah, a little um, uh, underwhelming, I guess. Is that kind of long, longer question that you're responding yeah, to? Yeah, it is. And I definitely understand what he's asking. That's a I'm good gonna, question. Just really quickly, I'm going to read that out loud for anyone who catches the recording and can't see these questions go by. Huh. So Toby yeah. asked, when using modules, there appear to be limited options for editing the module page and introducing the lessons. For example, no Gutenberg edit option. I'm skipping a bit here. This makes navigation a little confusing for students when they click through to the last lesson of one module to the next. I think that's a question. Sorry, <laughs> kind of yeah. off there. No, I, I understand what he's talking about. So if you are using modules, we create a module page, but we don't. There's not a really good way to edit it, and that's something that we know and that we need to look into. Um, I personally have just kind of stopped using the module page and kind of skipping it and putting that review or preview either on the last lesson in the previous module or the next lesson in the next module. Um, but I know that doesn't really answer the question. Um, it is on our, like, I don't want to say it's on our roadmap, like immediate roadmap, but it is something we're very aware of is that module page. We've had a lot of internal discussion about. So do modules precede lessons? If you have modules, that's from Steve. Um, so preceding the lessons, I think, so modules are just more like, and I can just show you actually, since I'm in here, I can add a module. And now my module name is like chapter one or, or something else. And that module can have a description. And then there can be a, con a container or collection of lessons within that module. And then I would create another module, chapter two, and it would have like the next set of lessons, right? Um, and you can be more creative with your module titles than chapter one and chapter two or something if you want to be. Um, but hopefully that 
answers that question. Uh, here's a question about uh, using breakpoints in videos we upload. So yes, our interactive videos supports any video from YouTube, any video from Vimeo, and then any video from Jetpack, which means um, anything uploaded directly to WordPress.com sites as well. You can add those interactive um, breakpoints too. Toby asked the question, can lessons have pages? Yes, they can. So if I edit a lesson, they don't always display nicely, but between the um, timeline and this text here, I'm going to add a page break. So I just look for forward slash, and I can't remember if it's page, yep, page break. Let's see what happens. Um, view lesson. Now we have page one and page two. The problem is the complete lesson button is already there and like it's gonna be hard for people to go to two. So that's something we might need to look into um, quickly <laughs> about not showing that complete lesson button until the last page. That would totally make sense. Um, I, did, I don't know how often people use pages, but it does make sense here to break them up like that. So that's pretty cool and a good question. Um, how do we link course completion to a certificate? So that's something that I had hoped to show and I kind of cut out um, because of time, but we do have a certificates tool and there's a lot of good documentation on it. So if you um, go back to the dashboard and you have certificates extension installed, you just create the certificate. And then when you were editing the course, in the sidebar, there was a setting for choose which template for the certificate goes to that course. And then everyone that completes it is going to get the certificate generated for them and an email that will be sent to them with a link to that certificate. Um, there's a lot of cool things in our settings that are worth checking out for emails um, and certificates when they get sent and how that works. You can customize those emails and how they look. Um, and all that sort of good stuff. We have BuddyPress in addition to Sensei. Does that complicate things? So I think you can definitely use them together. Um, really, it shouldn't complicate things. The If you're using our learning mode, it just kind of sideloads over your existing theme that works with BuddyPress. So, um, we don't have that I'm, I'm aware of any like BuddyPress groups integration. We do have a groups tool. So there might be something there that would be pretty simple to integrate, which might be useful, um, but shouldn't complicate. So if you customize learning mode templates, does this affect only the learning mode part of the site or the whole site? So what he's talking about here is if I go to settings and appearance, these are our learning mode templates. And we have four, uh, the default, what I showed you, there's a video one that I kind of showed you too, and a couple of others. If I customize them, this brings up the site editor. This only impacts those courses, this learning mode. Um, it doesn't impact um, the rest of your site or your theme. So this, this here, if I start editing this mode, so I can add in my sidebar, like an upsell to another course or a way of contacting me as the instructor, or I can add links to resources that you want people to follow as they are taking their course. It's kind of squished because I'm on a smaller screen that I'm sharing, um, but but that's how that works. And then might be our last question, how do groups work inside of Sensei? So if I go back to settings, we do have a groups tool under Sensei LMS groups and you create the group and give it a name. And um, then as I edit it, what you can do is anybody that's added to this group, they can either have different settings, different courses that they can access or times that they can, dates that they can access those courses. So the groups are really used to kind of manage cohorts, more time-based. 
So like maybe you have 20 students that are all going to start a course at the same time. They have access for the same six weeks. Then you have that same course that you can, you know, later use the same course, but you have students in another cohort and another group and you enroll them this way. This does integrate with um, with Automate Woo and things like that so that you can add people to groups based on payments and, and all sorts of things, but it, it's kind of unique to what your needs are and what you would like to do with groups. Um, one other thing you can do with groups is, which I didn't show at all, is you can take any content in a lesson and we have a visibility area and you can make that content only show to groups. So maybe there's something unique, unique to a group that you only want to show like information on a webinar or, or something. You could, you could do it that way. And then advertising on social media, really my quick and only um, answer there would be find a niche like as, as um, targeted as you can. Facebook group, a Slack community, um, those sorts of things. Like if you're gonna be, don't be general and just put it out there in tweets and expect people to find it. For courses specifically, I have seen LinkedIn be a pretty good place um, because people are thinking about like learning and, and bettering themselves and stuff as while they're on LinkedIn. And some posts, depending on what they are, like if you get reshared or, or whatever, the algorithm just works nicely there to kind of help give some reach. So I would give that a try. Sorry, I need to mute myself. Looks like we answered all the questions there. So that's awesome. Nice. Uh, we're just a little bit over on time, uh, but we still have like 30 people here. So people are hanging in right to the end. Uh, I, I want to get in a question real quickly before we wrap things up here. And that's uh, if you can kind of articulate um, what are what are the reasons that you would want to use Sensei Pro versus the free version of Sensei? What does is, what is Pro offer you that's above and beyond that? Yeah. Um, so... It Integration with WooCommerce is the main thing. So if you want to sell your course and you want that integration with WooCommerce, so that would be the, the main reason people choose Pro. Um, that interactive video tool, the required blocks, and all of our new AI tools are also part of mm -hmm. that um, Pro only. But with the free, you can create unlimited courses, have unlimited students. I mean, there's a lot of good use in there as well. Absolutely. Yeah. For free courses, it seems like it's a really good way to go. Um, yeah. Awesome. I think um, that's it. Oh, you know, Jennifer has a question. Can we get in touch with you? I think we would both answer this differently. So I'll let you answer. What's a good way to get in touch with Sensei? Yeah, with, with Sensei team, I would say um, I s s go to senseilms.com and the contact form there uh, pings our team and they can forward it to me um, if, if needed. Um, that's probably the safest and the best place. Perfect. I'm going to drop that link into our uh, chat here. And also, um, oops. if you have general WordPress questions and you are hosted on WordPress.com managed hosting, I'm also going to drop in our contact link here so you can reach out to us for help with any just general WordPress questions you have. Um, if you're on the WordPress.com business plan and using our managed hosting, um, we would also field Sensei questions for you as well. Uh, and live chat is included in the business plan if you choose the annual option. Uh, it's not included in the monthly billing option, um, but in the annual option, it comes with live chat support, which is really great. Um, for getting any general WordPress questions answered, questions about Sensei, um, and then also for anything that's a little bit trickier, we, we could redirect you to Sensei staff for anything that's a little bit above our uh, experience level with the plugin. Um, I think that's I'm happy to answer. To I'm happy to answer Toby's last question there. Please. We also have a community that we've tried to grow. It's called the educatorsp2.wordpress.com. It's a, it's a blog, basically a community blog, um, openly available that anybody can ask questions. Our team monitors, monitors it and, and answers. I would love to see that be more lively. So I think everyone that attended the webinar would be great folks to, to register. Great questions like the ones asked about, you know, social media, monetizing. It's a community there. So our team will try to answer, but also there's a lot of experts around that are using it that would love to chip in. Um, so I would love to see that grow and be more 
uh, used even more. It's there's a link to it in our footer on our website, but it's educatorsp2.wordpress.com. That's great. Also, Toby's been revealing himself as a Sensei user already with some of those very. Oh, I recognize his name. I recognize. <laughs> Thanks for his joining name. us, Toby. Appreciate <laughs> that. Um, I think that's all we have for today. So uh, again, Ronnie, I want to thank you very much for a really exciting um, presentation. Uh, I use Sensei all the time. We actually use it for our internal training here at WordPress.com. So everyone here who works at WordPress.com is very familiar with Sensei. Um, but even I learned a few things here today. So this definitely blew my mind as well. So thank you very much. Um, the only other thing I'm going to add here, and I'm going to drop this link again into our chat. Um, this is the reference materials for this webinar, and it's going to include a recording of this video. Uh, take Zoom a little bit of time to process that video. Um, before it can be uploaded. But as soon as it's ready, we're going to pop that into that, that page there. Uh, so go ahead and check that out, bookmark it, and come back if you don't see the video there already. Um, also, I'm going to um, leave this webinar open for about five minutes. We're going to turn off our cameras and our microphones, and we're going to uh, say goodbye to you here pretty soon. But I am going to leave the webinar open. So if there's any links that got by you in chat or in Q&A, um, you can go ahead and click on those and then bookmark them as you normally do. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a, a fond farewell. Uh, Ronnie, you as well. Go ahead. Uh, thank you all very much for attending. We hope to see you again on the next webinar. So until then, thank you very much, everyone.